Hey, hi YouTube, it's Dino from the Handyman Zone here in all my splendor and glory. Today we're kind of getting back to basics. I've been getting a lot of inboxes lately in the Handyman Zone about basic skills, basic handyman skills. So we're going to start from scratch. Today we're doing like hammers. And of course when you're dealing with hammers you're also going to be dealing with nails. So we will touch lightly on the subject of nails. Now as far as hammers, there's like a million different kinds. This is like a uh, auto body hammer, this is a finishing uh, upholstery hammer, there's another little bitty finishing hammer, okay, <clears throat> ball peen hammer, this is really for metal work and it has to do with the face of this, besides it doesn't have a nail puller on the end, the face is a different shape than a, a hammer made for driving nails, so this is basically for metal work or for hitting like a, um, chisels and stuff like that, you would never want to use this on a nail because you're going to hurt yourself. Bang your fingers a lot. Here's another ball peen. Here's another uh, uh, body pick hammer. This is for like metal work. Again, the face is totally different. You'd never want to try this with nails. Okay, this is what they call a mallet. This one happens to be full of like le little lead BBs um, to kind of uh, so it doesn't bounce so much. So this is a a, ma uh, um, a shot mallet. They call it a shot mallet. Another ball peen, they come in all different sizes, all right? So like here, right here, is just three different size ball peens. I think I even got another ball peen around here somewhere, even bigger. Okay, so, uh, and here is a, a, a metal mallet, all right? Or a sledge, a, a five pound sledge. Again, this is for like, <coughs> excuse me, for like hitting chisels or like knocking fence posts into position or driving a stake into the ground or something like that not for nails uh this is a, a mallet with a, a hard nylon uh they call it a non-marring mallet because it doesn't leave marks so there's nylon and then this end is rubber so if you like had to bang on something delicate and you didn't want to leave marks okay um this is a hatchet hammer so this is for real rough work, although it does have a nail puller and a hammer face, I would never want to use this uh, in like day-to-day -day, like nailing unless it was like a real emergency, like the final apocalypse when the zombies are attacking and you got to like nail boards over the door so they can't get in. All right, maybe something like that. A uh, little kid's hammer, perfect for little kids as compared to like a grown-up size hammer, okay? Little kid hammer, all right? Great to get your little one started in the handyman work, but make sure you train them right. Watch this video, okay? And I can't, I'm getting a lot of inboxes about my language, you know? If you don't like the way I talk, click off, you know? I can't stop, uh, you know, I'm me, that's it. You, you got me, here I am, you know? Uh, if you don't like it, you know, go back to church or something. Here's another upholstery hammer. Uh, another metalworking hammer. Again, the face is different. A leather mallet. Again, it's non-marring. It's very light. This would be like good for like a real set, like jewelry work or something like that. It's a nice quality tool. I kind of redid the handle myself with tape so it fits better in the hand. Okay, now we're going to get down to the woodworking. Uh, this is like a framing hammer. You can see as compared to like a regular hammer, general hammer, the framing hammer, the handle is a lot longer. It's probably like four inches longer. It's got a heavier head. So this is really made for like nailing like two by fours together with like big spiky nails like this, okay? So you wouldn't want to use this on any kind of finish work. Besides the head on this, it has that uh, cross in the metal. So when your nail's almost in and you give it that last whack, this ham is going to leave a mark in the wood, a real ugly mark. It's not bad for, for framing work, but anything you're going to see, uh, it's going to leave a mark that's going to ruin any kind of like front framing. So your general purpose ham is going to look something like this. This ends for pulling out like old nails or bent nails or whatever. And then you have your properly designed head made for hitting nails. It's got a nice handle on it. This one happens to be like leather discs, like packed together and then shellacked and stuff. It's got a nice balance. It's got a nice shape to it. It's a nice hammer. Um, one little tip I'd like to show you, and this is good for both beginners and, uh, and professionals. You can take it like some rough sandpaper, like some 36. And just on the face of the hammer, 
And I like to go across the face, not with it, but across it. Just rough it up with the sandpaper about that much. And uh, it gives a little extra grip. Uh, and uh, believe it or not, I can tell the difference when I do that. And if you're hammering all day, something like that is like a half a day. And then lunchtime when you're getting back to work, you give it another touching up with that sandpaper. And I'm, seriously, it gives a nice feel to the, to the nails. When you hit them, you can actually tell that you did something to the, to the face of the hammer that's making it better. So let's talk a little about nails to get you zoned in on that nails. aspect. You got of nails hand. of every different size and description. And this isn't even like the half of it. I mean, as time goes on and, uh, and we're moving more into this post-industrial age, the, the shape and the quality and the materials of these fasteners is just expanding at an unbelievable rate. But this would be like a three and a half or four inch D. This is like a 4D finishing nail, um, framing nail. Okay, this one happens to be galvanized. That's another thing. Like here's two of the exact same nails right here. And I don't know if you could see under the video, but this one is a, what we call finishing nail, and this is a galvanized finishing nail. Galvanizing is like a rust-proof finish they put on stuff. Great for exterior use. So although these two nails are the same age, this one has a lot of surface rust. This one is galvanized, and it, you can see it has no rust whatsoever. It's a little fatter than the non-galvanized because you got the galvanized coating on it. And, um, and also the head is a little shinier than the non-galvanized. So like in finished furniture and finished trim on the inside of a house, you would want to use the not galvanized. It also goes in easier because the galvanized one's a little rougher. But outside on a deck or something like that, or the trim around that exterior door, definitely want to use galvanized nails. So you got that difference. Um, then there is, uh, then there is, now these are the finishing nails. They have no head on them to speak of where this nail has a head on it. So this is not a finishing nail, but it has a head, which makes it a little easier to bang in. It makes it a little easier to pull out. And again, two of the exact same nails, one galvanized for exterior and one is just a regular nail. It's not galvanized. They call it bright. Okay. But it actually isn't bright because it actually rusts. Then, uh, this is like a, what they call a ringed nail, and I'll hold it a little close and let the autofocus catch up. It's got a series of rings on the shaft. This is actually designed to use for cedar shake siding on houses. It's really difficult to pull out because it's ringed. You can actually feel it's rough. There's rings all up and down the shaft. This is a spiral fluted, they call a fluted, um, I, this is like for flooring, for hardwood flooring. Again, it's really hard to pull out. So once it's in, it, it, these guys don't get loose and you can hardly even pull them out with the nail puller because they lock in so good. It's just different kind of nails. Here's a, a little bitty finishing nail here uh, with a little bit of a head on it. And here's the same size nail with a bigger head. It's not a finishing nail. And then you got like really little bitty guys like that, you know? And, and even though I showed you this 4D, there's nails that are like 9, 10 inches long for putting docks together and stuff. So this is just a little bit of what you got to deal with with nails. If you go into the fastener aisle at some of these hardware and home hardware stores and home centers, I mean, the whole aisle is, is full with fasteners. So you got a wide choice. You could like Google. You could ask for advice at the store of what you gotta put together or hold or hang up to get the right so nail So you gotta nail needs. something. You went through your toolbox and you picked like the medium sized hammer because that would seem best for your needs. So again, hammer choice is an important thing. And 99% of the time, this is my go-to when I gotta hammer a nail. And this is what they call a 20 ounce hammer, a 20 ounce claw hammer. And the claw is this part. Properly grasp a hammer, and, and I like this shot because I get to show off. Uh, I get to show off my well-developed body. Okay, so you basically want to hold the hammer in line with that with the fulcrum of your arm. Okay, so I'm not gonna like hold it crooked side to side. I'm gonna basically hold it straight with my arm. You want to kind of grab the hammer handle towards the end. 
A hammer is not something you want to choke up on because you're not going to get any power or control. Okay, so you really want to hold it, and especially you girls out there, you women, you're going to want to hold it like a man would hold it because that's the way you use a hammer. Although a lot of the men these days, you know, you women are better at this kind of stuff anyway because somewhere in the last couple of generations, the American male has fallen out of the loop, so to say, in being any kind of man around the house, let's say, you know, except for earning dollars, you know, what else do they do? Sit around and watch some stupid sports team and put on logo shirts? I mean, come on, these are grown men. All right, so anyway, you're holding it down at the end. You got it in line with your arm. Now, a hammer is not something you want to do with your wrist. You want to hammer with your arm from the elbow. Huh? You want to hammer from the elbow. Oh, look at that. Okay, I'm going to put the camera down a little bit because it's also important, and I realize a lot of times you can't control the position of what, you know, you got to put a hammer up on a nail. You can't put the nail down at waist height because that's the most comfortable place to hammer is down at waist height. So a lot of times it's overhead, it's over here, it's over there. You can't, all right, you can't control it sometimes. But under these conditions in producing this video, I am able to control it a little bit. So we're going to be working at waist height here. It's like scrap wood. This is pine. And this piece of scrap wood over here is uh, red oak. Uh, with uh, one, one side is stained. But it's red oak. Alright, so this is pine. It's just soft wood. It's very soft. This oak is a hardwood. It's very hard. And there's a big difference in nailing the two. But let's say we have to put a nail in the pine. We're gonna, whatever spot, you know, you marked it or whatever, you're gonna put the nail in. You're gonna wanna hold it with two fingers in that spot and give it a couple of taps just to get it to hold in place. At this point, you can take your hand away and you can finish hammering this nail without holding it. That gets your fingers away from getting hurt. Should the hammer slip off, you don't wanna smash your thumb. I'm hammering on a table right here, which isn't a very good table, and a lot of the energy of the hammering is getting absorbed by the table and it's bouncing a little bit. I just want you to realize that, just for the argument's sake of this video. Now, let's say I bent this nail as I was putting it in, okay? Let's say I bent it as I was putting it in. Sometimes you can come along here, and if you notice, I have the hammer resting on this wood and I'm sliding it along. And that's a neat little trick, I'll tell you. If you have to put a nail in, like a little piece of trim around a pane of glass or something, and you're scared you're going to hit the glass, I like to rest the hammer actually on the glass and use that as my guide. All right, so that was just a little tip. If you guys could pick up on that, that's great. If not, so anyway, I straightened out the nail. Now it actually bent right at down there. If I can get that little part where it bent down into the wood without bending again, I'm back up to good nail. And I don't have to worry about it bending again unless I hit it crooked. Okay, so that, all right, now that spot's down in. Now we can finish. Now let's say you gotta pull it out. We're gonna use the claw part. And what we do is we slip that in there. And then again, gripping up where I showed you to hold the hammer, and applying pressure back, we're getting a fulcrum action here, okay, fulcrum action, and we're able to pull that Trick. nail out. And a lot of people are even scared to hold that nail. So let's say you take a piece of cardboard, and you make a little cut in it, and you take your nail and you put it through the cardboard. Now, I can hold the cardboard, okay, I could use the cardboard instead of my fingers. I could hold that nail, get that initial... Okay, so now the nail's in there. Now I can just continue on and drive that nail home. Again, pulling it out, and we fulcrum. All right, so that's a little tip to get your fingers out of the way. I'm sure a lot of you are going to appreciate that. Now, let's say we got to put a big nail in a piece of wood. Now, this is a really big, fat nail. We're going to be having to really pound this thing to get it in there. I'm going to show you a little trick. In the trade, we call it pre-drilling. What we're going to do is take a drill with a drill bit that's appropriately sized smaller than the nail, yet big enough to help us out, and we're going to pre-drill 
in our required spot. Then we're going to put our nail in using the pre-drilled hole. And it's a lot easier if you pre-drill with some of these bigger nails or fasteners. Now let's say you got to get a nail out like this that's too high for the fulcrum to work. What you're going to do is put some spaces underneath it. You're able to get it out in that fashion. One more thing I want to show you. This is a finished nail. Now I was talking about putting a little piece of trim around a window pane and scared of hitting the glass with a hammer and using that the window pane as a guide. So let's say we're using like little bitty finished nails like this. Can you see it? Okay, what this is, it's like a spring-loaded and you put the nail in the front, okay? And it goes down the barrel. Now I'm gonna do the cardboard just so I can show you. And you're basically holding this in your hand and you push in and what it does is it pops the nail through okay so this is a really nice little thing and I'm gonna show you again now this nail has a little bit of a head on it but again it's a really little half inch nail okay see there it is all right now uh, you know I could finish up and drive it home with this thing with a little more pressure or I could get it in like halfway and then finish up with the hammer or something like that so this is a neat little thing um, I think this is called a uh, whatever finish uh, finish nail uh, whatever um, now let's talk about hardwood now the thing with hardwood and the reason I wanted to show you this was because actually and I don't know if it's going to happen for me, but that pre-drill trick I just showed you on these hardwoods, you really, most of the time you have to pre-drill. Because I'm going to show you, I'm going to try to put this nail in without uh, hurting myself. You see that? I just split the wood because it's a hardwood. And hardwood doesn't take nails or screws nicely. It doesn't like it. It's a hard wood. It's going to split and crack and you're going to ruin your work. If, if I had pre-drilled this, I'm going to use the same nail, but I'm going to use a smaller drill bit than we used on that big 4D nail. I'm going to use a little, I don't know what it is, 930 seconds or something like that. Okay, we're going to pre-drill. We're going to do the same thing, pre-drilling. Right near the edge, just like the other one. In fact, it's a little bit closer to the edge, and the wood did not split. The nail actually came through. So hardwood, you know, a couple you of nails will give you some really good holding power. If you drive them in nice and straight, it's a good job. But for a little bit more holding power, just a little bit, if you angle your nails the slightest.